Moses is a good shepherd, just like we know Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. So what we're going to look at in this episode is how Moses and Jesus compare. And we're seeing that he was rejected. Moses was rejected just like Jesus by his own people. He humbled himself. He came off the throne. And then one of them says to him, who made you prince and judge over us? And now he's in the Gentile land. And we're going to see how he is the good shepherd. Watch this. This is amazing. So Moses, the good shepherd. Here we are. Part three of this great series that we're in. And I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Isn't that awesome? You're going to see that in this episode. Watch this. When Pharaoh heard about this, remember Moses killed to try and protect his own. He killed that uh, that taskmaster who was being just brutal with his own people. And here he is now. It says that he, when Pharaoh heard about this matter, he tried to kill Moses. That's where we're at in the context of the story. But Moses fled from the presence of Pharaoh and settled in the land of Midian. Okay, this is a Gentile area, right? The Gentile land of Midian. He's no longer with the Hebrew people. He's right here in this area, right in here. Now we're going to get a zoom in on that to look even closer. Watch this. So it would be up in here. So this is the the Red Sea. And here up here would be Israel. Here's Egypt right here. And Midian is right in this area right here. We'll get even closer. We'll get we're gonna get a really close look now. So there's a lot of routes that people say that the uh, children of Israel took during the Exodus. And we're going to look at that later. Some say it was through here. Some say it was through the Reed Sea up here. And some say it came down through a trail right through here and across this portion right here. And this is the land of Midian right here. This is where Moses was. Uh, let's, let's keep going. <laughs> this is so fun, right? So here's Midian. Up here was the land of Canaan, later Israel. God called it Israel and gave it to the Hebrew people. And again, here's Egypt, that Nile Delta, right? Uh, that peninsula, the land of Goshen, where they grew all those uh, it was like an amazing place to grow wheat and other crops, and it still is even to this day. So Exodus 2, and he sat down by a well. So now Moses is here in the land of Midian, and he what did he do? He sat down by a well, probably in one of these oases that we find in that area. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. Now why is that important? You're about to see. Remember? Jesus said the seven golden lampstands, and Jesus is our high priest, right? And where, where was the high priest stationed? In that holy place of the temple, the dwelling place where God dwelled. And what was there? The seven golden lampstand, the menorah. And that was always a picture of the church. You're going to see that in Moses' story. Watch this. This is amazing, you guys. Here it is. So the priest of Midian had seven daughters, right? Seven. Here's the menorah, right? Revelation 1 says the seven lampstands are the seven churches. And what is the church? The church is called the bride of Christ. Now, it's one bride. Here we're seeing seven, and we saw seven letters to seven different churches in the book of Revelation, which no longer exists today, which is interesting because I believe what it showed us is what would happen in church history with those seven churches. Just like Jacob or Yaakov, he prophesied to the 12 sons of Israel showing what their tribes would do in Israeli history, right? And that's what we're seeing here with, I believe, in Revelation 1 with the seven churches. And let's look at that again. So the seven churches are those seven lampstands, right? Just like the menorah was always a picture of the seven churches. And they came, back to Exodus 2, here's in Moses' story, right? And they came to draw water, those seven daughters of Midian, and filled the, the troughs to water their father's flock. What does the church do today? What is the job of the church? To water, to feed, and to water the what? The father's flock. We are sheep, his people, God, Jesus called us his sheep. And what are they doing? The church's job is to water the flock, right? With what? The spirit waters the flock. The water is a picture of the Holy Spirit. We must always preach and teach with the power of the Holy Spirit. 
That means abiding in God, abiding in Jesus. So it continues in Exodus 2. Then the shepherds came and drove them away. So there were some evil shepherds, right? That's what we're seeing now. These evil shepherds drove those women away from the well, from the water. They didn't want them getting that water to the flock. But Moses stood up and he helped them and watered their flock. Now, stood up, that means he protected these seven women. And he protected the father's flock. And he drove those evil shepherds away. That's exactly what Jesus does today. He points out to us who the false shepherds are, the wolves in sheep's clothing, right? The false prophets, false teachers. And we must, as a church, drive them away. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, God points out who they are and God helps us drive them away. He drives them away too. So we must remember that. God takes care of a lot of that for us. So let's continue on here. Jesus said this in John chapter 10. He said, I am, one of the I am statements, right? I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. Jesus said, just as the father knows me and I know the father. So he's talking about this relationship that he has with the father and we know Jesus and we know the father through Jesus. That's always been the case. We always, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot come to the father except by me, Jesus said. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you must give your life to him to have access to God, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. He's the only way. So John 10 says this, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus laid his life down for you and for me. He laid his life down for us, my friends, because he loves us. God loves you. And Jesus continued, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. He's speaking to the Jewish people right here, and I must bring them in also. Also, not instead of, not in replacement of, but also. Now, who does that speak of? The Gentile church, the Gentiles. That doesn't mean he's done with Israel. That's a false theology to say that God is done with Israel. But John 10 continues, and Jesus said, and they will listen to my voice, right? That's the key. When you belong to him, you'll hear his voice. In fact, shepherds in history, throughout history, it's well documented. uh, The sheep always listen to their voice. They will ignore, in fact, run away from a stranger's voice. But when they hear, and they can hear from far away, and they know their shepherd's voice from from when they were little lambs, they knew his voice. And they'll come running to him, and they know he's good, and he'll protect them and give them food and water. And that's the whole idea of what Jesus is presenting here. So they they will become one flock with one shepherd. So someday, just like Joseph's story, where he had a Gentile bride and two sons, and they become one family because his 12, the, the 12 sons of Israel, all of Israel comes back to Joseph, and they became one. And in Romans chapter 11, that says that we are grafted into that olive tree, the olive tree being Israel, right? We're grafted into it as Gentiles. We don't become it, we are grafted in, we're absorbed into it. And we bear good fruit in that tree. But the natural branches, Paul wrote, will come back also. And when they do, it's going to be glorious because they're the natural branches. And there'll be much, much celebration when that happens, when Israel finally comes to recognize their Messiah. Just like, like with Joseph's story, his brothers recognize that he was alive. It's the same picture, you guys. That's why we study the Old Testament so we can understand it all. So, and they will become one flock with one shepherd, it says here. So it's good. Jesus said that. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Are you one of his? Do you belong to him? Have you ever given your life to Jesus Christ? Now is the time, my friend. You want to do it now. You don't want to delay if you hear the, the voice of God knocking on the, the door to your heart right now, and he gently knocks, that's his voice. He whispers. That's God's voice. I would recommend that you open your heart to him right now. You could receive him and be saved and be one of his sheep, one of his people, a child of God. But it's only through Yeshua, if you're in Israel, or Jesus, if you're a Gentile, 
the same name. He is the one. He is the Son of God. He is the only way to God the Father, to heaven. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He said it. Would you like to receive him? You can do it right now, my friend. Would you like to do that? Well, then say this prayer right after me. You may be feeling sorry for your sin. That's a good thing right now. As you open the door to your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and take residence in your heart, you will receive Jesus. So open your heart. Keep your heart open and tender. But if you would like to receive him right now, you can say this simple prayer repeating after me. Would you like to do that? Just repeat these words. You are praying to God, not to me, not to anybody else. This is business between you and God. All right? Just say this prayer. Repeat it after me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I am sorry for my sin. I ask that you would forgive me of my sin. And I thank you for forgiving me of my sin. I believe that you died on the cross, Jesus. I believe you shed your blood for me. I also believe that in three days you were raised from the dead and you are alive today. I choose to follow you as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen, my friend. If you did that, hey, congratulations. Heaven rejoices over what you just did. All of heaven. That's what the Bible says. So congratulations. Make sure you're going to a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church. Make sure you're getting fellowship with other believers, and you're praying and reading your Bible every day, all right? Hey, don't forget, hit this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You will be blessed. I'm sure of it. You'll be blessed by it as you discover Jesus on every page. Even if you're in Israel, you'll find him on every page of the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament. And you also see him in the New Testament. So, hey, I love you guys. God bless you.